Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fireside chat. Today, we are going to be talking about the value of leadership development for staffing firm and recruiting firm leaders. Uh, I'm joined with Tom Kosnick. I'm sure you're familiar with his face. He's been around the industry for the past two decades. He's the president of Visus Group, and he's really supported this industry in a lot of ways, uh, including running president's roundtables for years. Uh, you know, he helps companies ultimately with their organizational development, their profitability improvement, as well as work culture transformation. And Tom is honestly just a wealth of knowledge and passion around this topic of leadership development, networking. And so today we're going to be chatting all about the three prongs of leadership, including ultimately those executive educational programs, uh, coaches and mentorship, peer networking groups, as well as really the power of networking and some key reads you should check out if you're a leader in this space. So Tom, thank you and welcome. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. I'm uh, very happy to be here. <laughs> Great. So why don't we go ahead and dive in? I would love to hear more about really those three prongs of leadership, starting with that executive educational program side of things. Why is that important? Yeah, sure. Educational, uh, Stephen Covey talks about always sharpening the saw. And there are so many opportunities. The, uh, you know, things in our society and in business are changing so fast. I mean, when we think about all the things happening politically, economically, things with customers, but most important is the whole technology change and how fast that's, that's changing. So we really need to uh, 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 have our own e executive education or at least a commitment to developing ourselves educationally. So that, I mean, most of my clients, the C-suite, they have 10 or $15,000 uh, more where, where they allocate to each person on a C-suite. Hey, go out and uh, use that money for your own education, uh, whether that's taking a class, whether that's going to a conference, whether that's going to an educational session, whether that's buying, buying some books and reading some books. Uh, but it's all about, you know, gathering information, the, the intellect, right? The, the, the smarts right. Of, of, of who we are. It is, it is one of the, I, and I forget where I was on one of these, these webinars and they talked about, it was a sales enhancement kind of a, kind of a thing. Sure. And, and the guy was talking about, if you just read, if, if you're a sales exec or whatnot, and you just read one sales management book a month, uh, like they, the, the productivity that you have, by just reading one sales management book a wow. month is, is incredible. And, and uh, but it's just, it's like new ideas, right? We are creatures of habit. So whether we're brushing our teeth, driving to work, listening to music, managing people, <laughs> we, we're creatures of habit. And we end, we, we end up falling into the same, the same thing. Let's take, you know, for example, we have, gosh, in the work, in the workforce, we have uh, baby boomers in the workforce. We've got, uh, let's see, what was after baby boomers? Gen, Gen X, Gen X, well, then we have millennials. Gen now we have the digital generation. So we've got four, <laughs> four generations in the industry. And so uh, I, this was a big insight for me, you know, uh, is preference for communication. I learned the old school way of just making dials, sending letters right. and making dials. And so for me, my preferred means of communication is making dials. Well, it wasn't until like, and I wasn't complaining, you know, I, I uh, love the millennials, but uh, I had gotten to a conversation and somebody said, well, you know, your preferred method of communication is making phone calls. Our preferred method of communication is texting. And I just, I never thought about it that way. Right. Uh, but, you know, just the whole educational, just being exposed now, if you right. go, if you take like, like all these cities have like educational institutions and they do, they do summer classes, you take a week oh, sure. and go to Northwestern or you take a week and you go mm -hmm. to uh, Loyola and they'll, they'll have a class that you can take uh, on whatever uh, management techniques or right. finance techniques. Uh, well, and ultimately, uh, you know, you can branch out of the industry, right. And do things like that, or you can look at some of the great leadership offerings within the industry. Can you share some, some tangible uh, conferences or associations 
in this industry that you recommend? Oh, if you, if you, so two things. One is that if you own and manage a staffing business, if you're in a C-suite, like the, the staffing industry analyst executive form, you don't sure. want to miss that conference. I mean, that's a great conference to attend. Uh, I heard, I have not attended, now the American Staffing Association, they have Staffing World. Right. And uh, they've gotten so much better at Staffing World. Uh, there was, uh, anyway, they, they've done a great mm -hmm. job. Uh, that's, so that's become much more valuable to people that own and manage uh, staffing companies. Uh, and then uh, the ASA, they, they have like an executive, uh, they, they, they started on COVID, they didn't do it, but it was like yeah. in February. They had some kind of executive. I believe form. that's uh, coming up. So as those well. are, uh, and then yes, staffing world is this fall, and I believe the ASA, or excuse me, SIA executive form is this February again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, look. I mean, you're you go there to get pick up ideas and things like that, but you also go there just to hang out and shake hands and meet right. people and right. build your network. Right. Uh, power of networks. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of meeting people, right, and shaking hands. Uh, the second prong of the leadership, you know, those of those three prongs of leadership that that you found that work really well in this industry are coaches and mentors. So, oh, absolutely. If you can share yeah. more about that. We'd love to hear that. Yeah. Uh, now, I think by anybody, any by anybody's standard, they would say Bill Gates is a pretty successful guy. Yeah, fair. <laughs> so, and uh, and I forget how many coaches and mentors Bill Gates mm -hmm. said he had throughout his career. Uh, I even have uh, coaches and mentors that I use for my for my business. So it doesn't matter like how how big or how small coaches and mentors. These look, I mean, let's be honest, you if you are a senior manager, you own a business like your employees aren't going to give you critical feedback on sure. what you're doing, what, you know, a, a mistake you made or whatever. I mean, it's just it's just right. not going to happen. And so you need you need coaches and mentors two things. One, to give you uh, candid feedback on, on what you're doing. Um, the other thing in terms of just challenging the way that you're thinking about growing the business, managing the business, hiring people, uh, 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 doing deals with clients. I mean, go on and on. Your, your, your perception toward, you know, I had a conversation, listen to this. I, this is a true story. So I had a conversation, uh, I won't say this, the, the size of the business, but it was a sizable staffing company and uh, super highly respect this, this individual. Anyway, we, we were chatting away and about sales enhancement and uh, sales training and development and all that. As you know, we don't, the industry doesn't uh, uh, allocate a lot of dollars towards training and development. But anyway, in the midst of the whole thing, the, uh, you know, the, the person on the other end of the call said, you know, our, our sales reps, just our sales reps need to make 450 transactional activities a week and they'll be successful. And the pro our problem is they're too lazy to do it. <laughs> That's a big statement. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, and of course, uh, it, 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 you want wonderful company and all that stuff, but mm -hmm. Hey, like who's going to give that person feedback to say, wow, what did you just say? Like sure. our people are lazy. Is that what like, that, it, it's, it's an assumption, but anyway, so yeah. my point is, is that coaches and mentors, like they're not, a coach or a mentor is not politically attached to the organization. So right. they can give, they can give pinpoint feedback to individuals that can have a very enormous impact in terms Absolutely. of how they're managing, how they're managing, how they're making decisions, how they're building cultures. I, I've got so, Kelly, I, <laughs> We don't have enough time. I could, I could, I could go example right. by example. Well, and, and real even, even in my career, you know, and I've, I've done marketing for the staffing and recruiting space for over the last ten years, and and it's interesting because the first person that I sat out as a mentor, I saw speak about putting together marketing budgets for staffing firms, and uh, this individual had since moved to a different industry, so there was no, um, there was no competition at all right like she wasn't leading and competing staffing firms marketing uh, but she knew this space and she was about something like 10 years ahead of me in my career and just so so smart and so that's wonderful it's been interesting just along my career seeking out thank you and it's been great and you know just seeking out these different people and another one I've sought out when I started a young family there was a gal that I saw who just had a really impressive work-life balance 
and you know they say that's a difficult word right it's more where you prioritize at what time but uh you know and then a third who runs a business and is scaling it and so i think it is really important to seek out mentors at coaches and coaches at different stages of your career and at different stages yeah, of your business growth because where you were at 10 years ago is different than where you're at today those challenges are unique and so um, oh, I absolutely. absolutely. Hey, and, and you know, what's wonderful about the staffing industry is that like you can pick up the phone and you can call somebody that could be a competitor, like a competitor, a slight competitor or whatever. But hmm. I mean, you could, you could, maybe you saw a name in an article or something or somebody that was really successful growing their business. What's so, what I love about this industry is you can pick up the phone, make a phone call and say, Hey, I'm so-and-so I've got a little $10 million business. I just want to talk to you about how to grow a business. And nine times out of 10, that person will call <laughs> that right. person back. They just, I just find, I, I just, I mean, I, you know, I just, I just find that uh, our industry, you know, people, they're people, people. And, and they, right. they, and frankly, if you ask for help, they're just more, they're more, they're, they're, they're more than happy to help. It, it's just well, a, it, in that, in that regard, it's such a wonderful industry to be involved in. Yeah. And most of us have experienced that from someone ahead of us. And so we're very willing to offer that when somebody else reaches out, that's not quite to where we are yet. Right. Just kind of, I think about that term when it's closer to undergrad, you know, it's called an informational interview, right? Like, can yes. I have an informational interview with you? Uh, it's looked at differently, but it seems to feel more formal once you get further along in your career, but it's really the same thing. You're just trying yeah. to gain insight. And yeah, most people seem to be willing to share their successes and their blunders because they were benefited by somebody else's insight into their career. Right. So, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And mentors and coaches, by the way, I mean, they don't, they don't have to be an, an advisor. So, so typically, like if you've got a little business under 10 million in revenue in the industry, uh, uh, prudent to have an advisor that's got staffing industry experience. Mm -hmm. uh, there's several of us that, that do that. So that advisor is just bringing information, benchmarking data, helping you make decisions about things, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. But they've got staffing and industry uh, knowledge that, that is that as, as an advisor. Coaches and right. mentors, they don't have to have staffing industry experience. Sure, right. Coaches and mentors, they're talking about, they're challenging you in the way that you're, with the way that you're thinking about the business and how you're making decisions, how you're hiring people, uh, whether you're staying true to your values, uh, on, you know, on and on and on. And so that's all a coach or a mentor is all about, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh helping you slide into the uncomfort zone because <laughs> <laughs> right, right. that's how we grow right oh it's so true like, isn't it yeah yeah it's like and so if we like hey and no different i mean uh you, you have business owners that have been the same business owners they may have owned the business for 20 years but they're the same person one year for 20 mm. years in a row and they really haven't grown and kelly here's the thing if you want to grow your business you have to grow. It, right. It's just, it's that simple. And so, I mean, when I, Love when, uh, <laughs> when I get calls from, yeah, no, I mean, when I get called from, from, uh, from people, Oh, Tom, we've been stuck at, you know, 8 million in revenue. We've been stuck at 50 million in revenue. We've been stuck at 80 million, uh, whatever. And that the business is not stuck. The, the senior leadership team is stuck. They sure. have not grown. And so you want to grow your business. Uh, you have to grow. Uh, your leadership team has to grow. And that's what, frankly, that's, that's what coaches and mentors, you have to grow educationally, read right. books, go to conferences, all that good stuff. You have to grow but through coaches and mentors. And then the other, the other place to grow is through networks, which is that third exactly. prong mm -hmm. of, yeah. And, 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 and networks, and there's two kinds of networks, right? There's the uh, staffing industry networks, and then there's the non-staffing industry mm -hmm. networks. Uh, both very valuable and uh, again uh, always good to have people that are not from the industry but that are very successful business people uh, we've met a lot of there's a lot of people that are that are that were staffing that were sales execs in the staffing industry they went out and started their business and they're great sales people they're great mm -hmm. relationship business but they're terrible business people oh, and so sure, a sure. non yeah yeah so a not like a non-staffing networking group 
Uh, I'm just thinking about Vistage. I have a yep. number of clients that are that are Vistage members. Wonderful, great organization. Right. Or allied uh, or firm, EO. Firm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All those, uh, those, uh, you know, those are like successful business people that can look at your business from the outside uh, and ask questions that, like, you know, they 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 prick your ear. <laughs> right, right. And you're like. No one else is challenging they, me in that way, but I probably they, they, need that. <laughs> exactly. They, they prick your heart or you're like, oh, you know, you know, why, you know, why did Don ask that? have to ask that question. You know, it's just like, <laughs> you're waking up and I always say, I know I'm, I, I always say, I know I'm doing my job when, you know, when I, when I'm, when I'm advising or coaching somebody and uh, I get an email, oh, I woke up at two 30 in the morning and I couldn't go back to sleep. You know, you said X, Y, Z. And I just like, my brain is like, because oh, <laughs> growth, right? Our comfort right. zone, you know, it's, uh, yes. uh, so, and then, and then, and then, and then obviously the, uh, these, the, the uh, industry networks and there's just a wide, so for us in our staffing industry, in the staffing industry, there's a wide variety of, uh, of networking groups. There's mm -hmm. some that are, are uh, self-facilitated. Uh, there are some that are small groups that are facilitated. There are some larger groups where you've got 25, 30, staffing companies that meet a couple times a year so there's a wide variety of yeah. uh, networks and that's again uh all all part of uh all part of the the three prongs of executive development right and, and Tom, you guys host uh president roundtables and i've been hearing more and more lately about how asa has their you know peer roundtables and there's just there's a lot of resources out there that people can find yes Yes. Yeah. There, there, uh, there sure are. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the other, the, the other thing that we were talking about, you know, the power of the power of networks. Yeah. So, and this is, this is really important, uh, to, to, uh, you know, I, I always say that this would be true at network groups. So coaches, advisors, coaches, mentors, and networking groups, it's sort of like, uh, there's no, like I could never give somebody a checklist. Oh, like check these five boxes and then you can go with that individual. It's really an, an intuitive thing. You kind of know, I say it's sort of like, you know, how do you know, you know, the man you're going to marry or the woman you're going to marry? <laughs> you know, it's just like, right, there, right. there's no logic. Uh, uh, it's just like, you know, you just, you intuitively know you, uh, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the non-cognitive side of knowing, and you have to, you have to really trust that intuition. So, mm -hmm. but the power of networks, like, okay, I, and I'm a, I'm a big reader, all that good stuff. Uh, read, I read a bunch of, bunch of stuff in newspapers and things like that. Uh, but the uh, articles, you know, when was that article written? Uh, uh, when was that idea conceived for an art, for an article get, get published? Was that, six months ago, a year ago, year and a half ago, pro probably more than a year ago, that whatever idea that the author of that article right. print, you know, is publishing, you know, was generated. So, so now you're a year, a years, years of, of the river, you know, washed by you. And you're now just reading that idea. Hmm. Uh, a book, you know, a book is like two, three years. And, and not that it's not, you know, not that it's not good to re read articles right. in a book. But there's there's principles my, that you can gain from years ago, but when it oh, comes abs, to changing trends and technology and things like that, oh, I mean there's 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 management stuff that that Drucker wrote that's still just classic classic. Mm -hmm. I mean it's uh when you know one of my articles here is an article that was published in 1962, and let me tell you if you read it you would have thought it was published yesterday. It is mm -hmm. so pertinent and so good. But you know back to the power of networks. The power of networks is let's take let's take parka and yeah. uh and uh marketing and uh marketing automation and engagement with prospects or engagement with candidates or uh for example like i, I don't know i i know nothing about what you all do <laughs> and, I, and i really don't want to know i mean i've got a, i got enough stuff to learn yeah but like oh my gosh if i like owned and managed was running a staffing business i mean and all of a sudden like the marketing thing uh, it has overwhelmed my clients mm -hmm. because like you know these, these guys are thinking about marketing in terms of 
which is not, you know, it's just like, well, you know, marketing. I mean, it's uh, uh, yeah. brochures and websites and, and, uh, and uh, uh, we're doing a job fair. No, let's do a splash with the marketing. Oh, my Lord. I mean, marketing is like, oh, I mean, it's right. exploded because of the technology. Well, the power of networks is that you're in a group of other staffing businesses that are implementing whatever, a, a, a parka uh, initiative, or they're implementing a Herefish uh, uh, mm -hmm. campaign or some of these other tools, but you're a, a, a on-demand staffing platform, you know, yeah. uh, you know, a work in, for example, or uh, a next, ne next crew. But anyway, long story short is like, here, you're like, you're like live in the war room when you, if you're in an intimate network, power of networks, if you're oh. in an intimate network of people that are doing that, you're in the war room, room watching like what mistakes these guys are making and right. you're getting feedback and, and whatnot. There's nothing that tops that. There's, there's nothing that tops that. Right. It, it's, and, uh, and it's so I, that's why I say, you know, go ahead. Oh, sorry. There's a, there's a lag on my end. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, I, I was just saying that, uh, uh, yeah, just the power, the, the, the power of networks of just having access to other uh, staffing companies that mm -hmm. that authentically care about one another and right. uh, want to help each other succeed where, you know, they're bouncing back. I, I, I've seen it so much in my in the president roundtables that we manage. It's just it's amazing. It's amazing oh, yeah. to watch like. Uh, uh, well, let's let, let's take the on-demand staffing platform now, and there's so many options out there. Uh, but like, you get a company that's a 10 million or 15 million dollar year company that starts to implement one of those on-demand uh, staffing platforms, and gosh, I mean, you just uh, you just learn so much in terms oh, of yeah. the mistakes and the 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 the, the shorts or the the uh where we where we had false starts and what oh well yeah. don't do this and, uh, and definitely do this this and this and right it's, just, it's 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 thousands of dollars thousands of dollars and so oh, you can't yeah. and and look those those uh, you know those those uh uh software you know those companies offer offering those software solutions i mean they want you to succeed obviously but you know they've got all kinds of clients and all that stuff. I mean they they can only hand hold your hand so much, right? I mean they're sure, gonna have sure. to help you with an implementation and then and then pat you on the back and you know adios amigos, you know and sure. uh, and well and it's it's funny learn it, what if you're if you're a staffing or recruiting firm owner and you're in the day to day, you're growing your business, you're managing your team, you're making sure profitability is where it needs to be. All of those things we find really often. You know I'm talking to leaders ultimately every day. And it's, it's something where you get your blinders on because you know that in order to make your business successful, there's some core things you have to focus on. Yeah. But if you're in a peer networking group, to your point, now you're starting to hear, oh, this is what people are doing with marketing automation, or this is what people are doing with uh, programmatic. You, you know, there's just so many things, even just in the marketing sphere, not to mention all of the facets that it, it opens your horizon of other things you should be thinking about. And that doesn't mean you need to act on them in the next 20 minutes, but now at least you're aware and you're starting to see how uh, people are having successes or shortcomings with them. And you can kind of learn mm -hmm. through that. So I, I have always been a big fan of networking and I just couldn't agree with you more. That there's yeah. so much power there. Yo, uh, you, 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 you can... One of the, one of my, one of my, uh, one of my strongest testimonials, uh, this gentleman has sold his business since, uh, but anyway, he said, you can know a lot about growing a business. You can't know everything, but with a good networking group, you can come close. <laughs> I love that. Uh, isn't that you a know, great I, testimonial? I, I just, is, I, that uh, is a great testimonial. And it's so true because it's, it's not just your things you're learning from, you're learning from everybody else's. Um, and, and, you know, one of the other topics we wanted to hit on were some of those key leadership books. And Tom, the first time we got on a Zoom call, uh, you had a, just a stack of books behind you. And, and I know that you were an avid reader, which is so wonderful. And so you've distilled it down to three books you'd recommend that 
uh, owners and leaders of staffing and recruiting firms should check out. So let's yeah, hear. yes, yeah, It'll, yeah. In our in our in our talk here is all about leadership development. If I want to grow my business, I have to grow, and so I, I really uh, pick those three. You know, the power to see ourselves. It's actually uh, a Harvard Business Review uh, publication that was print that was that was written back in nineteen. It was published in nineteen sixty two. You know, so talk mm-hmm. talking about you know when things were printed and all that stuff. The power to see ourselves, Paul Brower, B R O U W E R. So I was t- I'm tied into the Center for Creative Leadership and lucked in actually lucked into a relationship with a uh, you know, a gentleman here in the Chicagoland area, PhD, and he did succession planning with like big corporations and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Anyway, mm-hmm. kind of a long story on how I connected with him, but I it's one of the benefits of living in the big city. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I connected with them. Uh, fantastic guy, Tom. You need to get you need to get tied into he, two things. You need to get tied in the Center for Creative Leadership, mm-hmm. which, by the way, that's another educational institution that if you own and run a staffing business, check it out. They've got some great stuff. Awesome. Center for Creative awesome. Leadership, headquartered out of North Carolina, where it doesn't snow in in the in the winter time. <laughs> yeah, Tom. You in Chicago, me in Minneapolis. We know all about that. <laughs> Oh, we, yeah, we, we, we do. But the power to see ourselves, uh, that was the other thing that Vince told me, like, oh, you've got time, you got to read this article, and you got to get your clients to read this article. So look, uh, Kelly, uh, what that article is really about is a method to, uh, uh, a method for an executive to, to develop oneself. And so here's the thing, uh, is that uh, really what we try to do, and even there's two, what I try to do in my coaching and mentoring and advisory, and what I try to do in our, our President's Roundtable is we're trying to get people to see things differently. So if I want to grow my business, I've got, I've got a, we, you know, you, we've always heard, you know, you got to have a paradigm shift. So, uh, and sometimes I like, whatever, but uh, uh, long story short, we all have assumptions. We have some. We have assumptions about employees, about uh, temporaries, about contractors, about the politics, about clients, about how business is conducted, how sales are had, how recruiting is had. Like we have, we have assumptions. We never talk about the assumptions. We, sure. our behavior and our decision making. Uh, drives from our assumptions. Well, we never talk about assumptions. Um, you know, that's one piece of it. And the other piece of it is that we all have extensive experiences which create a graph at which we encounter with the, with the world. Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I grew up, uh, uh, I grew up uh, one, of t- one of 10 uh, oh, wow. uh, in, the, in the Detroit area. And so uh, people say to me, gosh, I don't know, how could you be facilitating these groups of, of people for so long? And I said, because I grew up, I grew up in a, in a round table. <laughs> are you, are you somewhere in the middle? Are you oldest, youngest? Seven, seven. I tell my wife, you married, you married lucky number seven to 10. <laughs> so I'm number seven. So, uh, which, which by the way, uh, my best parenting techniques I learned from the mistakes of my older siblings. <laughs> so, um, um, uh, indebted to them, but uh, you know, so we we so we have this this based on our experiences, uh, our uh, whatever we have this graph and at, at which we interact with the world and how we interpret what's coming to us and on and on and on. And so uh, the power to see ourselves is a methodology on how I can. Uh, get those assumptions out of the back of my head. Uh, I call it, you know, the behind the eyes. I, I got to get behind the eyes of my clients. I've got to get those assumptions out on the table, and I've, I've got to get people to, in a safe, uh, in a in a non defensive way, you know, get those assumptions out on the table, and then like question those assumptions, talk about those assumptions, challenge those assumptions. Mm-hmm. So if I can think about my little, my little uh, uh, thing, well, you know, your preferred method of communication is, is, uh, is by the phone. My, well, sure. you know, our preferred com- uh, method of communication is, is texting. You know, so that, that was, that's just a minor, minor a paradigm shift in the sense that, oh, I had an assumption about what was the best way to communicate. Well, all of a sudden, like that assumption, like got challenged, you know, one statement, sure. that assumption got that got challenged. So if I can like get the assumptions that these folks have out on the table, we talk about them, that we can question them, 
And if we can, we can change assumptions about employees, about hiring, about contracts, about staffing, all, all that, then, and, uh, then uh, I can, then I can get behavior change. So I, I then I can get that. growth and development and behavior change. So the first one and, is actually and that's, that and that's the, uh, it, it's, yeah, I, sorry. I'm, I'm just really, this, I do this for a living. So it's I know I, I carry on about this, but anyway, the power to see ourselves, unbelievable, fantastic read. Awesome. It's like every executive I've given talks, well, multiple executive teams on the power to see ourselves just a fantastic read, well worth it. Uh, and then, uh, and, and, and then it, it, go, it goes all the way into like building out an action, like visioning and building out an action plan. It's just such mm. a great read. It's just really, really good. The other one, uh, the other one is uh, uh, the, the, from, uh, from Values to Action. And uh, this is written by, <clears throat> this is written by a gentleman uh, that uh, was a CEO and then uh, moved on to the, to a next part in his career. And he's uh, teaching at uh, Northwestern uh, up here in, uh, oh, in uh, uh, Evanston, Illinois, and, uh, Illinois and whatnot. But anyway, uh, this is all about, <clears throat> it's a new day. And so, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, we, you know, we talked about the four generations that the four generations that are in the workplace right now, but, uh, and, and I think like we're now over 50% of the workforce uh, millennials Look, and uh, one of the things I, that I do love about millennials is that they, 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 they want purpose. They want to work for organizations that have a authentic, uh, value-driven purpose. By the way, I want to say, by the way, this came to me by an associate of mine who grew a staffing company from zero to $180 million in revenue um super great super great guy just whatnot and uh, he said to me tom this is my bible you know this is uh you, you gotta read this book that's how i came upon this book is uh is uh is but anyway what this what this does is uh is is how uh you know we can read all the leadership development stuff that we want and oh we need a vision oh we need values oh we need action plans and all that stuff that's that's kind of sort of like the easy stuff but then how do you live your values? How do you, how do you breathe oh, you know, your values? How do you intuit them? How do you, how do they, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, he talks about, you know, the four, the four principles, self-reflection, balance and perspective, true self-confidence and genuine humility. Hmm. Uh, and, and we know from, uh, we know from, uh, you know, good to great, the Jim Collins stuff that level five leadership is humility. Sure. Oh, um, you know, uh, <laughs> tell me if you're yeah. passionate about that book. I love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just such a, it's, it's just, it's just such a, it's just such a great read because, because really what it is, um, you just can't run a company anymore. I mean, kids, we can, we can develop comp plans and we can have foosball tables and we can have great training and all that stuff. But there's a, there's a, uh, um, I mean, people today can tell me if I'm, tell me if I'm not, tell me if I'm wrong here, Kelly. I mean, feel free to challenge me, sure. but people today, they want to, they want to work for authentic value driven organizations. And, 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 and I don't care how big the organization is. It's all driven from the top down. You know, what's that? Right. What's, I wish I knew this and I wish I knew this in Italian, but there's an Italian phrase. Uh, you know, the fish stinks from the head down. And, <laughs> and uh, I can't say I know uh, it either, but but I would agree with you. That is definitely the general consensus I hear from the millennial uh, generation is that they're looking for something with purpose. They want to understand why what they're doing matters to the larger picture, you know, and, and there's obviously a lot of parts that go into running a successful business. So part of that is just helping under helping people understand what they're doing and how it's important to the overall picture. Um, and oh, I'd love yeah. to hear about what that third book is too. I mean, you have third. probably dozens and dozens of- I, I do, I do. And that's, that's Kim Scott, okay. Radical Candor. And uh, so this came to me through an associate of mine that uh, was not from the staffing industry. And uh, uh, in a three-year period, that, that this business that he uh, came in to run, it was a staffing business. And uh, he took them from uh, less than a million dollars of EBITDA to about three and a half million of EBITDA in, uh, wow. in three years. 
and uh, and this was uh, so radical candor is uh, we 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 talked about like getting assumptions again. So we're all uh, leadership development and whatnot. Uh, we we've all had uh, supervisors. We've all had people in our lives that uh, that came and that 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 just made a statement, and it sent us reeling, right? Yeah. I mean, our like yeah. it just like it just knocked us off our chair, like. And, and maybe not, maybe not intentional, but, you know, said something, made a comment and like that comment was so uh, accurate <clears throat> and I don't want to use, I don't want to use uh, confrontational, but that the word was like, uh, like a, 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 an arrow to the heart, right? Yep. Uh, not an arrow to the head, an arrow to the, because in the end, you know, great companies are built with the heart and, and, uh, True. And, and whatnot, but radical candor. So this is all about even, okay, so you've got leadership and leadership and management, there, there is kind of a loop or there is kind of like sometimes, I'm, you know, management kind of leads into leadership, leadership blends into, but uh, in terms of our communication as a leader, and this book is just filled with some great techniques and uh, tools. It's just awesome. packed with some great stuff. And it's all about, look, I mean, people don't want to hear a bunch of fluff. Right. You know, they, they like, look, I, I want to grow. I want to develop. I mean, uh, to, I mean, who do you report to? I mean, do you want them to give you a bunch of fluff and pat on the backs? No. I mean, people, people want, people want to be challenged. They want to grow. They want to, right. they want to develop. I mean, that's, look at it, all the kids for the last 10 years, the kids coming out of college, what do they value? You know, we all think it's the big dollar. It's not the dollar. Uh, it's, it's, I, I want development is what, you know, training and development. That's what, that's what our kids coming out of college want. And, 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 and a lot of the millennials. And so anyway, radical candor is, uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's tools and techniques in terms of like, how do you, uh, how do you, you know, communicate? How do you, you know, occasionally, you know, uh, how do you occasionally pull on the heartstrings of employees and how do you motivate? How do you like listen? How do you listen? And so that you fully understand what motivates uh, an individual. Well, by the way, you know, this, it's, it's all part of engagement, right? Leadership, right. it's an engage, engaging your employees. And let me tell you, this is, this is, a, this is a, uh, a little, little bonus for those who stayed with us for the last 25 minutes. Uh, the, the, the strongest correlation to profitability is employee engagement. So mm -hmm. you own and manage, you own and manage a staffing business and you do not have uh, any, any kind of uh, structured program or something where your management is not doing something to actively engage your employees. You're not training your managers to right. your if you're not getting you know, to engage your employees, uh, which is which, by the way, engagement, it's all about understanding, asking, understanding what motivates uh, persons that are working in your organizations. Right. And, making and everybody's sure, a little bit different, too. Yeah. And just yeah. And making sure that that what those individuals are motivated by, that what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis are the things that motivate them. Right. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, how, when was the last time somebody at Parka, Parka uh, asked you, hey, Kelly, you know, what motivates you? What? You know, it's, it's <laughs> funny. I, uh, I report to our, our president, Jared Hummel, and he and I have worked together for the last four years. And he's gotten to know very well what motivates me. And it's, it's funny because every once in a while you do have to have that conversation, right? Like, are you, are you still having fun? Like, is this, is this what you need to be going after? And it's true just to kind of stay in touch with your, your team, the people you manage, the people that manage you, as well as those, those peer groups and those mentors. So Tom, this has been great. Thank you so much for chatting about really just the value of leadership development you know, top to bottom, side to side for staffing and recruiting firm owners and leaders. And so just want to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here. If you have more questions about this, uh, you know, as you can see, Tom is a wealth of knowledge on these topics and sounds like he's got a lot of really great resources. Um, I'm always available to chat, you know, talk shop when it comes to things like marketing and culture and business growth. Those are some of my big favorite topics. But 
Tom, thank you so much for joining okay. us. You're welcome. It's a uh, it's been an honor servicing the the staffing industry. We have wonderful clients in the staffing industry. I love what I do for a living, and uh, we're very fortunate. Very very fortunate yeah. to to be where, where we're at right now. All of us we're very yeah. fortunate and. Uh, and the staffing industry is going nowhere. It's only going to continue to grow. And uh, it's a very admirable, admirable industry to be in. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Tom. And join us next time. We're going to be talking about overall the importance of building culture in a company and aligning that to your values. Uh, so stay tuned and we will see you guys next time.